In the examples that we've seen so far, we've been passing down as input into functions single values, and we've been sending single values back out as output into the calling program. But often, we want to send arrays down into the function as input and receive arrays back as output. We're already familiar with sending arrays down as input and receiving them back as output when we look at many of the built-in functions in MATLAB and Octave. For example, with the square root function, x is actually an array. We can pass down two values as a one by two array. The two values are going to be 4 and 25 in a single array. And we receive a one by two array back as output. In this example here, we have an array that is a 1 by 8, has 8 different values in the main program. We are going to call a function called meany that will calculate the mean of all the elements uh, of an array. So here we pass down the array a into the function meany. x becomes a 1 by 8 array containing the values that were stored in a. So here we have some uh, variable called m, and we set it equal to 0, and that this will eventually be the mean. And we say from i equals 1 to num l x. Well, x is a 1 by 8, so num l x is 8. And every time we go through this loop, we will add to m the uh, next element in the array. So we're going to add up all the elements in the array and store them in m, and then we divide by the number of elements, and that gives us the mean. We come to the end of the function, and the mean is displayed. But we can also send down sub a subset of a if we want to. Here, we send the second through seventh element, so 5, 7, 8, 4, 3, 9, we send this 1 by 6 array into x. So x now becomes a 1 by 6. But this function uh, still works because we've said that we're going to go from i equals 1 to num l x. So num l x in this case will be 6. So this function is general for any sized array that we pass down to it. And it will calculate the mean. In this example, we pass down arrays as input, and we also pass back arrays as output. So let's go through this line by line. We define three arrays, x, y, and z, and they're different sizes. We come to the function called fun, and we pass down the array x, the values of the array x. So there are four values, 3, 6, 9, 2, that are passed down to a in the function. So a is a 1 by 4 array. We are going to display on the screen the third element of a, which is 9. And then we will create a new array called b, which will be the first and second elements of a. And again, remember a has the elements 3, 6, 9, and 2. So the elements 3 and 9 will be stored in b. b is going to be passed up to the main program and stored in w. So now w will get the values of 3 and 6. Let's execute this code right now. And then we'll go through the remaining two commands. So again, we see 9, 3, and 6. So, so far, so good. Let's go look at fun again. And here we're not passing the entire array y down. We're only passing down elements 3 through 5. So 1, 4, and 7. So these three array elements get passed down to a. Now a is a 1 by 3 with the values 1, 4, and 7 stored in it. So if we display the third element of a, that's 7. 
we now store the first and second elements of a in b, that's 1 and 4, these values are passed back up to the main program where they're stored in t. So t has the values of 1 and 4. Finally, we come to this command, where we pass down the fourth through ninth elements of z. So 7, 6, 5, 1, 2, uh, 3, and that's it. So those are passed down to a. The third element is going to be 5, and that's displayed on the screen. So again, remember, we passed down 7, 6, 5, 1, 2, 3. So 5 is displayed. Then we take the first two elements of A, which are 7 and 6, pass them into B, and that's passed back up to the main program where they're stored in R.